The Flight to the Moon, Lu Xun. The great house was overhung with evening mist. Thick black smoke rose from the neighbors' chimneys. Yi looked down at the crows and a sparrow he had shot, and his heart sank. Inside the house, Chang Er had been watching the sunset from the round window, and just as he expected, she was not happy at all. For over a year, they had nothing but crow meat to eat. Yi thought about the old days, when he shot the giant boar and the huge python that harassed the people. Those were the glorious days. Back then, he shot as much as he pleased. Yet that caused the whole place to be cleaned out, leaving them with nothing but crows. He himself had an elixir that the priests gave him, which allows him to fly up to the heaven. But he cannot leave his wife like this with nothing but crow meat to eat. The lamp burning low lit up the face of Chang Er, but his beautiful wife. Was now even paler and thinner than before. He decided tomorrow he will go even farther to look for game. Night passed. A new day dawned. In a flash, Yi woke up and soon was galloping out of the village. For seventy whole li, no game could be found. He went through the forest to another stretch of cowling fields. Under the hot sun, neither crow nor sparrow could be heard. A dozen paces farther on, however, there was a large pigeon, and his heart leaped with joy. He swiftly drew his bow and fired. His shaft sped through the air like a shooting star and hit the mark. But as he approached the bird, an old woman hurried towards the horse, shouting angrily, for what Yi thought to be a wood pigeon was actually the woman's best hen, and she demanded for Yi to pay for it. Afterwards, Yi also found out from the old woman. That someone has spread the rumor that it was not him, but his former pupil Feng Min, that shot the giant boar and the huge python. Undisturbed by the rumor, however, he then happily headed home, for he and Chang'e shall feast on chicken soup for dinner. Yi and his horse did not reach the familiar cowling fields till dusk. He glimpsed a shadowy figure some way off. At once, an arrow sang through the air towards him. Without reining his horse, Yi fired back. Nine times the two men shot at each other, and nine times the arrows collided. Now, out of arrows, Yi saw that it was Feng Min who was shooting at him, gloating as he aimed another arrow. In a flash, his enemy's bow arched like a full moon, and the arrow whistled through the air towards Yi's throat. It struck him full in the mouth. He tumbled over and fell to the ground. Seeing Yi was dead. Feng Min walked over, smirking in victory. He gazed at the face of the corpse. Suddenly, Yi opened his eyes and sat up, smiling. Yi spat out the arrow. You can't kill your master with the skills he taught you. He told his former pupil. He then remounted and headed home, shaking his head sadly as he heard an oath carried out after him. Before he came to the end of the cowling fields, night has fallen. A round snow-white moon lit up the path before him, and a cold wind soothed his cheeks. This was even better than coming home from a great hunt. But as he approached home, Yi noticed that the whole house was in confusion. Yi learned from the servant that Chang Er had gone missing. Once in the room, though, he saw the place was in utter disorder, and the elixir given to him by the priest was missing. As realization came to Yi, fury took possession of him. He reached for his bow. The one he had used to shot the suns and stepped outside. He fitted three arrows to the string and drew the bow to the full, aiming straight at the moon. Standing there as firm as rock, his eyes darting lightning, hair flying in the wind like the black tongues of flame. For one instant, he looked again like a hero who long ago had shot the nine suns. There was a whistle, one only. The three shafts left the string one after the other. Too fast for eye to see or ear to hear, inflicting three wounds to the moon. But the moon still it hung there peacefully, shedding a calm, even brighter light, as if completely unscathed. Listlessly, he had no choice but to give up and went inside, unable to believe that she had the heart to leave him and fly up there alone. He sighed and decided 
Tomorrow he shall go as the priest for another elixir, so that he can follow her up the moon. The End